Hello there, I'm Jules Brown and welcome to Off The Cuff Reviews. Today we're going to be, or I'm going to be, reviewing the second album by Funkadelic, um, Free Your Mind and Your Ass Will Follow. Uh, this was released in July 1970 um, on Westbound Records and was recorded in D Detroit. A little um, history of my involvement with, not involvement, but my discovery, my personal discovery with Funkadelic or at least George Clinton's music was um, in the very early 1990s when I was in my early 20s. Um, I um, invested in, I listened to quite a lot of Funkadelic in Parliament uh, during my um, specifically my CD buying days. So I bought many albums by both Funkadelic and Parliament. But not, but not tellingly, not this one. And that's because I never saw it in Virgin Records in Kingston upon Thames or HMV in Kingston upon Thames or even Beggar's Banquet in Kingston upon Thames. So I was under the impression back then that America Eats Its Young was Funkadelic's first album because this was before the days of the internet. So it was a bit more difficult to get hold of. Uh, this sort of information. So, um, Free Your Mind and Your Ass Will Follow is a relatively new album to me that I've only listened to within the last decade. Anyway, so here we are. Um, when uh, George Clinton made this record, it was his, his idea to see if they could uh, be in the studio, construct an album while being totally under the influence of acid. Um, so, if you can tell that this album has de definitely got that influence on it, it's groundbreaking in its production technique and sound. Really distorted. Hold on while we connect. It really distorted um, guitar and keyboards. Um, so, and there are certain people, interesting people who appear on this album, actually, who are uncredited, like Martha Reeves, apparently. Um, starts off with title track, Free Your Mind and Your Ass Will Follow. This is a 10-minute, far-out, psychedelic um, piece of music, which is uh, extremely raw, uh, acid rock, if you will. Lots of shifting between the channels going on, the keyboards and the guitars. Um Eddie Hazel excelling himself on, on guitar. Uh, dist distorted, you get this quite a lot, distorted keyboards. Um, just far out number. Um, it's this overriding, um, drenched in reverb sound. Uh, well, the bass isn't actually, I would say, as a slight critique, but I'm not absolutely off my box on acid that um the bass is not loud enough in a lot of these tracks and i don't know um if that was intentional um perhaps it was there are certain moments when the bass becomes really prominent like george clinton is uh is mucking about with production so much he suddenly wow the bass has suddenly got louder what's going on there but um hey I'm a stiff guy from London. I wouldn't know about these things, would I? Um, the second track is uh, Friday Night, August the 14th. It's it, as equally raw as the title track. Uh, this is a guitar-driven number. Uh, Eddie Hazel to the to the fore. Lots of wah-wah pedal. Um, huge reverb. And this, yeah, towards the end of the track, this is this sort of reverby drum solo as well. Anything goes anything goes that's got a bit of a jam jamming feel to it and that's side one side two uh starts with funky dollar bill which is as, a, as the as the title suggests a funky number um so they're mixing together funk psychedelia and rock essentially um psychedelic funk would suits sum up this track um i would say that again the bass wasn't heavy enough in it there's a tinkling piano in there and there's a lot of guitar wah wah and i think that basically what's the difference between george clinton's funkadelic and george clinton's parliament i would say guitar 
Funkadelic has more guitar, gives Eddie Hazel more license just to go fucking, cr excuse me, to go crazy. Whereas Parliament is, I suppose, uh, Bootsy Collins um, is more bass heavy and more laid back, um, generally Parliament songs. Hey, uh, now you know. Um, track number two, I want to know if it's good to you. Maybe my personal favourite on this album. Um, maybe a bit more together. Maybe they're a bit more sober on this track. I don't know. But it's a, it's got more space in it. It's got this um, really down in the mix, this dum -dum -dum thundering bass. Uh, great sound. Um, but the drums and the bass are seem to really low down really do low down in the mix while the guitars are, and everything else and drenched in reverb and then halfway through the towards the end of the track suddenly the bass gets louder the drums get louder and it kind of works in a way but you know, i'm sort of like thinking do i I'm, i want to turn that bass up you know i want to when i'm listening back to it on the player i want to turn this up um but i'm scared of annoying the neighbors slightly you know having it full blast but Suddenly, halfway through the track, as I say, the bass and the drums get louder for me, um, so I don't need to go up and adjust the uh, volume controls. Uh, thanks, George. Um, track number three um, is a bluesy number called Some More, um, with this sort of uh, re repetitive or repeated reverb sound on the drums, which is a very sort of um, stoned uh probably acid rock influence sound um again um fit, fits into the mood of this whole um ethos of what george clinton was trying to do with this album um and it finishes the track the album on eulogy and light which is uh like a, a bastardized bastardized uh lord's prayer um with his strange uh, backing vocals, which are or backwoods vocals in the background, which you get in quite a lot of um, funkadelic numbers, and also the voice gets speeded up, and it reminds me of when Prince used to do that. So I think this is where Prince got his influence when he got his uh, he invented his alter ego. Prince invented his alter ego characters with different names and had these really high voices and like that, and eulogy and light have deploys this technique um slight maybe slightly tongue-in-cheek uh playfully profound number um performed in a tripped out kind of way to end the album um yeah so the album is just all this george clinton mucking about with these uh production techniques um perhaps in a way the out of all the funkadelic albums i've heard which is most most of them um it's it's got that to to the most degree i think um uh, so yeah um a very groundbreaking slight i would say revolutionary there's no such thing as slightly revolutionary but yeah it's definitely um it's peddling a new line and challenging you and uh, I like that about the album. And um, I'm going to give this album, um, I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. Free Your Mind and Your Ass Will Follow. Re recorded in July 1970 in Detroit. A solid 8 out of 10. And uh, a pleasure and um, a real education to listen to. Um, so there you go. That's my review. I'm Jules Brown. If you want to subscribe to Off The Cuff Reviews, OT, OTCR, please uh, click on the subscribe button on the YouTube little um, doobie down there. Um, and um, make a comment if you wish as well. It'd be nice to hear from you. And uh, as always, and um, enjoy the rest of your day. And thank you for listening. I'm going to do one of those delayed logouts now. See you later.